Hey there, uh, I want to take uh, a, a few minutes to talk about what Jessica and I saw at the theater the other day, The Chosen, uh, season three, episodes one and two. Uh, many of you have probably seen uh, The Chosen, uh, seasons one and two, and now kind of as a preview, they've released the first two episodes of season three in the theaters, and uh, we really enjoyed it. We've enjoyed the, the Chosen from the beginning all the way uh, to the end of season two, and then these first two episodes of season three until a certain point and that's what I want to talk about there's a there's a spoiler alert so uh, or a spoiler here so I'm gonna just say spoiler alert if you want to go see it yourself first but there's a scene where after Jesus commissions the 12 um, he, he calls them apostles at that point out to go ahead ahead of him two by two to various places to prepare the way for him but as they go heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons um, there's one of the apostles in particular that has some kind of ailment. Uh, he's known as Little John in the in the um, in the show. Well, anyway, he comes up to Jesus and he says, "Hey, Jesus, so you've given us power to heal and everything, right?" And he's like, "Yeah." Um, he's like, "You know, they talked about not feeling anything and all that, which is which is um, uh, cool and everything." But he says. I just, I'm having trouble like either believing that, uh, forgive me, I'm paraphrasing a bit here, so don't quote me word for word on this of what they said, but the, the, the idea is here. You haven't healed me yet, so how am I supposed to, you know, be able to go out and heal other people? And by the way, if you are believing God for a healing, and it's taking time to manifest or it's a it's a recovery over time or something it's not instantaneous maybe uh, on the outside then you should still be praying for the sick or uh, as Jesus commissioned them to heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers cast out demons but what John asked here little John was this question and Jesus says something like the character of Jesus in the show the Bible does not record this, which, of course, they need creative license. They need to add content to make it a show uh, with more details and things like that. But um, this is a big doctrinal thing, and they they really added a lot, interpreted a lot uh, incorrectly. And I'm going to state that right now in more detail. So little John asked this question, and Jesus says something like, yeah, in God's perfect will, um, you know, he, he would want you healed. He said, but I trust you. And because I trust you, he says, basically, it's going to have an impact in, in a certain type of way that uh, if I healed you, it, it wouldn't. And he said this, he said, there's dozens of people already that can attest to being healed right and i think he said and thousands more will will happen as you know the ministry continues on but basically i'm not going to heal you because i trust you and it's going to be better if you're not healed now the reason this is ins was inserted by the writers and approved and everything is because this is a huge question that many people in the body of Christ have today. Hey, why do we pray for so-and-so and they died? Why have we been praying or why have I been praying to be healed of this or that and it just hasn't happened? So what we do is we take what the Word of God says, then we take our experiences and we look at the Word of God through our experiences and we draw conclusions about what it says. That if you did not have the experiences, you would not draw the same conclusions. Um, I was talking to a friend about this who got saved recently. He, he uh, grew up in the Mormon church. Uh, he was like a missionary at 18, 19, 20 in another country, uh, as many of them are, many of the young men are. Um, women, I'm not sure how, how it works for them, but I know for at least young men. And uh, up until his uh, 40s, late 40s, I think, um, this, is, this is what he followed. And anyways, he's born again now. He loves the Lord. And we were talking about this topic a few months ago. And I was explaining how 
a lot of people will just say, yeah, God just doesn't heal anymore and this, this and that. And he's reading the Bible as a new believer and it's coming alive to him. And he just says, that sounds like a cop out. And I said, um, it is a cop out. It's not a cop out to condemn those who are struggling and wondering why. It's a cop out that the enemy's brought to try to get us to not walk in the power that God um, has for us. Jesus took stripes for our healing. Jesus, think of this, the Bible talks about him being the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What Lamb in the Old Testament do you read about that the priest needed to torture before they spilled its blood out and sacrificed it on that sacrificed it on the altar. Even Isaac, think of it, um, who Abraham took up to to sacrifice, and then he didn't actually need to. Um, he was just going to be killed and and uh, burnt there on the altar. Well, why all this torture for Jesus? Why didn't uh, he just? have his throat slit and his blood spilled out. Isn't it his blood that washes away our sins? Well, the answer is yes, it is his blood that washes away our sins, but he took stripes. He was beaten. Isaiah 53 says, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Some translations say griefs and sorrows. And it goes on to talk about how he was bruised for our iniquities. Um, he was pierced through for our transgressions. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Do you know in Matthew chapter 8, in one of the instances where, uh, right after Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law who had a fever, he uh, heals all these people who are brought to him. And then Matthew records, thus fulfilling, and he quotes Isaiah 53, the very passage that talks about him carrying our griefs and our sorrows, or our sicknesses and our pains. Meaning those who have tried to spiritualize that and say, oh, that's just talking about, um, you know, spiritual sickness and this and that. Do, do we need to be uh, uh, created new in our spirit? Absolutely. That's what the born again experience is. But Jesus took stripes for our healing. In 1 Peter 2.24, uh, what's mentioned in Matthew chapter 8 and in Isaiah 53 is repeated once again. And it talks about how he bore all of our sins on the cross. And then it says in that same verse that by his stripes we were, now past tense, we were healed. When someone gets born again and they, they ask God for forgiveness and they confess Jesus as their Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans, Romans chapter 10. Jesus doesn't go back to the cross and get crucified again. He's already been crucified. He's already had his blood shed for our sins. But what does uh, seem to happen in the minds of people in regards to healing is that we need God to just heal. We need him to, we need him to do something. Well, the Bible records that by his stripes, we are healed. Again, in 1 Peter, by his stripes, we were healed. And that scripture in Matthew chapter 8 is showing that the fulfillment of that thing was Jesus physically healing people. When Jesus then went on to actually pay for all of this, he paid for the sins of the world, past, present, and future on the cross. He also paid for healing, past, present, and future. When Jesus took those stripes, whatever you need today was paid for at, this, at that scourging post. In the process of his, his torture to the crucifixion, which again, didn't need to happen for the washing of our sins away. He could have just had his blood spilled and his life given up and then raised the third day. He didn't have to go through all that torture. He went through that to bear all of our sicknesses and all of our diseases. When in the chosen, they give this answer of, oh, it's just because God trusts you and he, he, he's going to get more glory. More people are going to be impacted. That is a lie from the enemy who is wanting the church to walk in 
powerlessness, if that's a word. There's so much more to, to say on this, but I just felt compelled to share because The Chosen is such a powerful uh, show. It has it deeply impacted me in different ways. But this particular thing is so critical because there are people who are dying, who have died, and who are going to face challenges in the future. And they're going to attribute what the enemy is putting on them to their father in heaven. And it's not just, maybe maybe they'll be able to play the spiritual gymnastics in their mind and, and explain that, okay, well, he loves me. And, and would you put cancer on your child because you trust them? But the younger child, maybe uh, you would heal him if you could, uh, even though you could heal both because your older child is just going to, no, that's, that's, a, that's perversion. You would not do that. And our father in heaven would not do that. Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the thief does not come except to kill, steal and destroy. But I came to bring life and that more abundantly. When killing, stealing and destruction happens, when whatever happened to little John, this made up parts of this story in the chosen episode, season three, episode two, uh, the thief did that. Jesus came to bring life and life more abundantly. And if Jesus, if, if James would have stuck to what the lepers say when he said, Lord, if you're willing, he knew God, he knew Jesus could, but he said, if you're willing, and if the writers and those who approved the editors and the whoever else was involved in, in this particular accepting of, of this scene and script, if they would have stuck to the word, Jesus would have said, be healed, little John. And that would have been it. Maybe he would have had him do something. Maybe he would have laid his hands on him. Uh, but he would have been healed. Period. And you know what? Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed then, he heals now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The thing about now is that it's already done. He already paid for it. All we have to do is receive it by faith. Man, there's so much to say on this. I, I again, I just wanted to I, I wanted to say this for any of you who might be deceived into going, all right, well, I guess I, I was thinking maybe I could be healed of this cancer or I could be healed of this or that or my loved one or whatever. But you know what? Um, the Lord spoke to me when I saw The Chosen season three, episode two. And what, what he's shown me is that the reason he's not healing me is because he trusts me so much. Man, he loves you so much. The thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. He came, and one of the things that he brought and is still available to you is healing. All right, that's it. There's so much more, so many questions that I know people that maybe heard that and went, oh, that just answered everything for me when they watched that episode. Would say, well, what about this person? What about that, that person? What about this, this, and that? Hey, I love to talk about these things. If you want to have a Bible discussion where we, you bring up any scriptures that you'd like to bring up, I'll bring up any scriptures that uh, I'd like to bring up. And we'll look at the word and see what the Bible has to say about this topic. And we'll get you healed <laughs> by the power of Jesus.